all right guys I'm back again for a little short video this is on the 1925 Chrysler uh, I think I've taken about a hundred of these videos all of them about three minutes long so it's uh, uh, you could work for two hours but only take a three minute video to show people what you've actually done so that's just the way it is <laughs> but let me let you look see uh, I'll show you what I'm working on right now all right so I've got the wheels off of the front of this and uh, what I'm doing is I'm putting in uh, I took the brake hoses off of it because this is all hydraulic brakes and the brake lines uh, they were pretty tough to come off uh, it's really hard to see up under the frame uh, yeah it bolted right there and then to the back of the the uh, housing here and this has got sort of a crazy uh, brake set up it's a band type and uh, it actually has fluid in it so it's pretty good because I know this car has been sitting for a very long time so there's fluid in this but in the brake line going to the uh, to the frame it looked like there was milk milk in it like it was water and oil mix but this was clear so if I'm lucky the wheel cylinders on this might be okay uh, they might be good enough to use uh, and I did have to do a repair this is a, a very bad thing to do but you can see it's I welded the spring together there and there uh, <clears throat> you know I'm sure anybody else would have just made a whole spring and bent the eyes in it. Uh, you know, took an old leaf spring and then just bent one eye. But uh, i going to try this. Uh, it's supported here and here. And we're going to see if it works. I heated the spring up. I heated it out. Heated it up. Uh, and it's been broken for a long time because they had a big old clamp right through here. Uh, so I heated it out. I heated the spring up. Then I welded it. And then I let it cool down by itself. So I'm sure it made it soft. So maybe because I let it soft instead of cooling it down and made it brittle. Uh, I'm not sure how spring material acts, but uh, you know, because nobody welds a spring together, I'm sure. Uh, it's, you know, something like this. But since this is a 15 mile an hour car at best and 15 miles from here, that'd be all the mileage I put on it. Uh, I think I can get away with it, even if it breaks. Uh, I don't think it's going to go anywhere to just park, uh, and maybe put the front axle a little bit out of whack or something. But I don't think it'll cause any grief. And I'll just keep watching it and see what happens uh, to see if it wants to break or what. I'll just watch it and see. And if it breaks again, then I'll have to come up with another solution. I'll have to make a, a spring for this. Uh, I'm not sure how spring material acts when you do things to it. So uh, we'll just have to try and see. But this is what I'm doing here. And I'm working with the, sh the uh, shocks right now. I've got both wheels off the front. There's the wheels, and it's got these big old, you can see the big old drums, and the band rides on the outside of them. These are all wooden wheels. And I got both sides off. Yeah, it's, I got the light glaring in it. And uh, so let me show you what the shocks, uh, this is a crazy look at shock. I'm making all the uh, shocks or... Uh, it's this band here is what attached to the this attaches to the uh, front end it's clamped in like that and this part that's busted in two was like that and you can see what happened and it was cut well I, I guess every one of them broke in the same place and it might have something to do because it goes through this and it might have something to do with this area being rubbed uh, with this over, you know, 100 years. 
but since uh, uh you know if it lasted 50 years i'll be okay i won't be around but uh this is what they consist of this is one i haven't done anything to yet and it is just a it looks like a there's a uh a liner here a brake liner right here and this is flexible like that so i think what happens and it's of course a spring loaded here so i think what happens when the uh when the axle goes down it relaxes all this i think yeah because it pulls it and then pulls this in a little bit so it something like that it, it lets it go down easy but when it comes back up the spring grabs hold and pulls this in like a brake and it rubs up against this piece here which is like a brake drum and I think that's how it works because this band gets put around here like so just like so and it wraps all the way around and then it goes in here and then comes out through here. Because this one here, I've just already cut my bands. There's one of my bands I cut. Old old toe strap I had. And uh, this is one I've already put back together. I had to take the rivets because this thing is, uh, uh, let's see, it's riveted on. And since I don't have any brass rivets, I, I have a bunch of bronze screws, but... Bronze is pretty tough stuff, and I don't know if I could take a screw and crush it enough to make it work. Silicon bronze, but I can with brass, but I just don't have any brass stuff. So I took the grinder and just nicked off the edges of this where it's been peened over, and then just pushed it out with a center punch, which left me a little dimple sticking out. So that's what I did, and, and stuck it back through the new strap. You can see I've got holes in it right there. And I used the torch and a Phillips screwdriver and uh, just burnt holes through it, which works good. And, of course, this strap is a little wider, so I just trimmed the edges and uh, then heated it up with a torch to, to sort of melt the uh, side of the strap to keep it from coming unraveled. See, I've already done the end. I just run it across the torch real quick, and so I can I can keep a a full width of this. It's it's wider, but it's not that much wider. You can see, you know, see just a little bit wider, but it will fit through this cut, no problem. You know, it's uh, see that? Yeah, so that we're good there. But this is the shocks, and bolt that on, and then pull this down to the axle, and then clamp it around like that, and you've got yourself a uh, 1925 Chrysler shock. I'm not even sure what they call these things. They're probably not called shocks, but there is a tag on here, and really looks like... I don't know if that's a I think that's a uh, N E V E R I think Maybe if somebody knows exactly what these things are they could say hey this is what it is and this is how they work and and they're good up to about 80 miles an hour yeah, uh-huh. Yes. That's exactly what I want to do. Take a car with wooden wheels, take her up to about 80 miles an hour, just to test it out. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next thing I think I'm going to do, once I get all four of these shocks done, is I'm probably going to go on and move on to the gas tank. Because right now I'm, I've gotten all the wood done and springs done and everything inside the car. I'm still waiting on a couple materials, uh, so I'm going to do the gas tank. I've got to get all the gas tank lines. Gas tank mounts right back here. Uh, yeah, you can see the 
big bolt in it right there. And yeah, oh, that, I think it might bolt into that, that bracket right there. It's just turned, so it probably needs to turn straight down. Yeah, that's what it is. So, uh, and the gas tank looks good inside. I was really surprised. Most of these gas tanks on these cars have been sitting are full of rust and just crap. But this tank, I looked inside with a light. And I don't think I'm going to have to cut it like I do most of the tanks and reseal it. I think we're going to be good to go. So I'm going to take another look at it real good with a with a good light. Uh, but I think it's going to be okay. But I've got to make sure all the lines are clear. And then i got to get back here to the back wheels and get these shocks off also. And get the brake lines off of it which are going to be a little tough. I would like to not have to pull the back wheels because they're a lot harder to pull off than the front. I think it's got a tapered shaft on these. And you have to use a puller, I think. So I would prefer to leave the wheel on, leave it alone, and get in, take the line off from laying under the car, which is probably going to be a treat, but... If I can do it, that's the way I'm going to do it. Uh, so this is about where we are. Uh, yeah, there's not much else. This is just, I've greased the car. I've greased everything in the front. This got those crazy zerks. So I've taken the, had to take uh, one of the zerks out for the car and put a regular zerk in its place and then grease it and then pull the zerk back out put the old Zerk back in because uh, it's got a, like a tapered Zerk. I think uh, Fords have a similar type and I don't have a grease gun for that and it looks like it'd be tough to do. So that worked for me. Uh, instead of replacing all the Zerks, I just went ahead and only had one good Zerk. So I wasn't going to buy a bunch of Zerks just to do this because you probably never grease it again. All right, so this is where we're at. Uh, you know, I'm going to come up here and start piddling with the engine. Uh, that'll be my next chore. I'll go on the other side and pull the carburetor off, go through that, make sure the carburetor's okay, and probably pull the starter off and look at that, and probably even the generator and look at that. And I think I'll probably invest in a new belt for it because I can't imagine a belt being any good, even though it looks good, but I just can't imagine it being any account. And then I'll check out the electrics as far as the uh, distributor and coil. And we'll pull the plugs and, you know, just whatever it takes to see if I can get the engine running. All right. Whoa, break it up. All right, guys. So until I uh, get a bunch more stuff done to give you another two-minute uh, video, uh, tell me what you think. If you hate it, you like it, you'd rather watch me sharpen pencils, whatever. Just let me know. Put a comment down. Even if you think I'm ugly. I don't care. <laughs> I'll see you all later. Bye.